Hey everybody, this is John Lemesny, and tonight I'm going to show you how uh, layer modes work. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly age a photo. The way that I'm going to do that is by importing a photo, as I have here. You can do that just by um, right-clicking on the main window and choosing File. Uh, open or open as layers. Um, usually open uh, is the first thing you want to do so you open up your default image and then uh, any additional layers you want to add you would open as layers. So I opened up this image. This is my father uh, who passed away a few years back um, who I love dearly and uh, what I've done is I opened as a layer this textured image which I thought was an interesting uh, color and texture I'm gonna use this to uh, change the original photo let me show you how simple that is so um, once I have the photo where I want the uh, texture where I want by uh, using the move tool I can drop that if you look over here, I have this opacity setting. I can take the opacity down to see where it is on top of that image. And that in, in and of itself is an interesting effect. By taking the opacity down of a topmost layer, uh, you can create sort of a filter on top of that. But on top of the opacity, above the opacity uh, setting, is the mode setting. And if we change that mode from normal to dissolve, for example, uh, it doesn't seem like much happens, but if I change it to multiply, you can see that all of a sudden there's an automated way of uh, having that layer, the, the texture layer, merge with the lower layer. If I choose divide, it looks like that. If I choose screen, it looks like that. If I choose overlay, it looks like this. You can see that's very subtle. Let's try dodge. So that for me is a very interesting effect. It sort of has a sun, sun uh, hardened Polaroid effect. If I choose burn it'll be rather dark. If I choose hard light it'll look like this. If I choose soft light it'll look like this. And the best thing that I can tell you to do is to experiment until you find whatever it is that you are looking for. If you feel like the effect is too strong, you can take the opacity down on the topmost layer and then bring it back up until you have the right amount of uh, that effect present. I really like this at full opacity. And uh, the only thing remaining for me is that I want to crop this down so that it's just the affected portion of the uh, image. So what I'm going to do is uh, use the crop tool which is right here and using the crop tool I'm going to select basically the same size as my uh, top layer and once I have that I'm gonna go ahead and hit return on my keyboard and what that did was crop all of the layers to the size that I had selected with my crop tool so um, another nice thing is that if I don't like that effect I can always go back to the original but uh, look how quickly this image is affected uh, strongly with the addition of that layer. One thing I do want to do is I want to um, add some brightness and contrast to that bottommost layer. So I selected it. I'm going to increase it uh, just a bit. So I can do that either by changing the number and taking a look at what the effect is. Uh, I have this preview button checked here. 
I'm also going to take the contrast and increase it about 20. You can see that uh, quickly it's a better image for it. I'm going to move this up to 25. I'm going to move this one up to 25. And I like that. So I'm going to say OK. And when I adjust brightness and contrast, it really only affects the selected layer. Um, which, because I have this layer mode set on the uh, topmost layer, in a way, affecting the bottom layer also affects the top layer. But when I'm playing with brightness and contrast, it was not affecting directly the topmost layer. I think this is a really useful uh, tool and yet another thing that you can do in the GIMP. Um, I hope to see you next time for the next uh, GIMP screencast. Bye.